Hey, hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Audacity Podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, the ever so swall. Suavemente. And Devonair. Devonair. Julian of Julian Creates. And my other illustrious, bright, shining star of a co-host is who? Who you is? Cool. Yes, y'all. Welcome back to the Audacity Podcast. I guess and dope ass like adjectives like you just said. Like, I'm going to work on it. I'm going to work on it for next time. Yeah, you know, I'll be a walking thesaurus sometimes. Every so I'm often. A thesaurus, yes. Mm-hmm. Every so often. But y'all, we still in February. We still talking about self-love. But we, we, we kind of decided to to run it back and dive deep this week Mm -hmm. Um, as we're talking about self-love and different forms of self-love and self-discovery we really wanted to we felt the necessary need to talk about self-advocacy today um it's just so yet that y'all know we are recording this on valentine's day happy valentine's day february 14th right um so and you know the heart and the heart and mind tells you kind of directs you on how you need to talk today. Um, and sometimes, you know, this day could be in people's feelings for some and stuff like that. And it just led to some introspection. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to go a little deeper. It, it all relates to sewing and creativity because that's who we are. It, it relates. But we just really needed to to run it back and focus on some things. And yeah. what we're going to start with is a is a, actually a hot topic, a, a current topic. If you follow, if you be in these TikTok streets. <laughs> Not the TikTok streets. TikTok, TikTok YouTube, TikTok. a little bit of everything streets. But everybody's been talking about it this week. Is um, We are talking about, it started with the Club Shay Shay interview with Monique, um, mm-hmm. where she really kind of... Um, Talk, talk of her experience and aired her truth and stuff like that in the comedy comedy in, industry, which is fine. Everybody has their opinion. Everybody has that right to do so. Right. Um, but then this week, um, on TikTok, her son, what's his name, child? I'll be forget. I've been, it literally slipped my head. I know. I, I forgot it as well. But her son, her oldest son, um, decided to share of his experience as. She is coming from this experience of being wronged and stuff like that. She want he wants to share his own experience in this process. Um, and in two tic- TikTok videos now on his page, he shared um his feelings in his relationship or lack thereof with his mother. Mm-hmm. Um in a very very eloquently stated um videos, two videos, where he decided to read instead of actually um like speak from like off the dome and yeah and i think that for many people it hit home now for some it hit home in a way like oh she ain't nobody she ain't you know yada 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 i did not i did not see it i did not get that sense from that um but what i got was somebody can be both wrong and right at the same time and When you are speaking for the child within and self-advocating for yourself, Mm -hmm. um, when literally the person you have to talk to only really listens to you in one platform, the platform Mm -hmm. that gets the views, that's what sometimes get the hit hit the dog and make them holler. And from and from that and from that, what we have seen is that. Um, she made another video in response um, with her husband, her daddy, as she called him daddy, not daddy, but daddy. You got to say it like that, daddy. Um, it's so cringy. It is, but that's their business. I, if a relationship is consensual and works for them, that's their business. You're correct. Thank you. Um, but it, there's still a... Um, it really showed that it hit home for her the way that she went about responding. Yes. And, 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 and basically all the stuff that you talked about and all this, all this extra platitudes and sweetheart, honey, baby, whatever she'd be calling folks went out the window and how you responded. Yeah. And it showed true colors and it shows your weak point 
and how you did not take full time to really process what was being said. Mm. Yeah, Um, I agree with that because he really took time in that, it wasn't even 10 minutes. So in that nine minute video, he definitely mm -hmm. took time to be like, hey, and so like, this is what it is, right? And I feel like the intentionality as well as the mere fact that he was just like, yeah, so I'm going to write out all of my thoughts. And my man had not five minutes worth of thoughts, not seven minutes worth of thoughts. He had damn near 10 minutes worth of thoughts that he was like, I'm going to write this out. He took us from Aaliyah's four page letter and enclosed it with a kiss to now a 10 minute letter that was enclosed with a disc. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and that's just, just the first one. And that there was, was another 10 minutes. There was another 10 minutes in response to the video they did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Um, I have dealt with hurt with both of my parents, right? I don't think that I have been hurt by them to the extent where I could sit down and write a 20, 20 minutes, anything. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and honestly, if I wrote, sat down and I wrote the first 10 minute of anything, my parents would be like, wow. Wow. Like, she wrote this down because she was this hurt by something that we did. If any of my kids came to me with a 10 minute letter that they wrote out, whether they put that shit up on TikTok, Instagram, or whatever is to come in the future... Do you know the amount of pause that I would take? Hmm. The amount of pause, because literally my only response would be like, I am so sorry that I thought that I was intending to do one thing and my impact did another. Is there some way that we can go about healing from this together? Like, do we need to go to a third party? Because if I'm not hearing you and you are not feeling heard by me, Perhaps someone could be in between us, right? Perhaps we could hire a professional to help us get on the same page. Whether that same page is, we are actually no longer continuing this relationship and, you know, we're finished. Or whether it's we need to take the following steps to actually heal our relationship, right? Because she's saying one thing and he's like, I'm confused as to why she's confused because we, I thought we were on the same page. Like we weren't pursuing this relationship between either one of us. So you know what I'm first off, and I want to commend you because but you're but I need you to think from a different mind. She Delulu. Sorry. No, because you are coming from a hold healed person. Okay. Um, and you would respond as such. I'm so I've I've been that child and I've written letters. Okay? Mm. I've written letters and that have never gotten responses. Not making okay. me feel happy, Julian, at all. So I've written the letters and I've never gotten responses um, saying like, why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. like, like, let's be real about it. And these, these are, these are my, these are my things. Yeah. Never responds. I, and I'm, I paid for stamps for it. No, I paid for the stamps. I paid for stamps um, to never get responded to. Um, and then just people expecting used to be the bigger person. Um, and I think, and as sadly, the way this this transpires in Black families, this whole, well, you know, you got to just let go and forgive and y'all family. I, look, the family fucked my husband. If if you know the reference, you know the reference. That ain't happened to me. That ain't my story. That ain't my, y'all, that ain't my story. Y'all better not put that on me. <laughs> but if you know the reference to yeah, the movie. Example. <laughs> you know, so, but, and I think that they, we are so epigenetically, epigenetically, like we gotta, we gotta go there. It's in our DNA that the hurt is so. I just want to pause for a second because the way that he dropped this big ass word. <laughs> in the like, Sir, I've only had one cup of coffee today. You know. <laughs> I'm over here like, spell it. No, I'm just joking. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Continue. Yes. And just but, drop a couple more big words on us. 
But literally, it's like the DNA of the hurt and pain, the trauma that is in our families mm -hmm. to, to negate feelings of the wronged. And you just supposed mm. to get it. Because I think yeah. generationally, as a culture, we are expected to just get over it. But yeah. then we do it to each other. Similar yeah. to like what we see with a lot of abuse and corporal punishment and stuff like that amongst for kids. And then you're just supposed to be okay. Because that's what my family did. Because that's what they did. Because it, it, like it look but, at it from generation. But the infamous to thing is, I turned up okay. But did you? But did you? But did you? Oh, child. But you know. So, but what I heard, and I think what really struck me about this 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 young man's, and I mean he's grown. He's in his thirties. Message. He did not disparage her. Mm -mm. He said his truth. He mm -hmm. called her to task. He did not disparage her. Mm -mm. And he wrote from a place of objectivity that usually I don't have. And I was like, maybe that's what I've been missing. Because when, I, when I'm writing something, and especially to a parent that I feel has aggrieved me. Mm, aggrieved. Come on. My sir. pen becomes a knife, a scalpel, if you will. And I'm 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 looking for blood. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I, so and I can I have like he took the heat off and when he did it, and usually I'm operating at like I'm 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 at lava hot when I am trying to get my feelings across. Um and because a lot of y'all know me, I could be real yeah. go with you, like go with the flow. I, I can let things roll off my back. But when I'm hurt, hurt for me makes me feel anger because when I'm hurt, I feel weak. And yeah. again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not toxic, toxically masculine to nobody else but myself. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and especially as a black gay man in this world. Um, there are some shields and some blocks and stuff like that that I've had to build for myself to operate and to move. Um, and a lot of times for myself and the way that I talk to myself, it comes off as very toxic, like very yeah. toxic, very toxic, very hyper masculine, just yeah. to me. I want Perfect. nobody else to live that but me. Wow. Um, oh, it's craziness. So the idea of, you know, I don't cry for real. Because I'm like, oh, that, that, that up like I don't have that option to not to be weak. Mm. Okay. Like I need the strength of no, we we can't I ain't got I'm time. like Julian, do you think that I because I cry every day I'm weak? Oh my mm. gosh. Now no. Again, <laughs> I said with me. This is me. <laughs> and it's flawed is a it's a flawed understanding of life. It's, it doesn't make sense. And me and my therapist, we we've been working on it. Right. Um but this is this is how my reality works in my mind. Like I I don't have time to to show or feel these things, um, and sometimes I then cannot provide. I, and y'all y'all hear me talk. I can talk and I can provide. I can I know how to get my point across. But there are certain times and certain with certain people that are triggering mm. that that goes out the window for a little bit, and I want to hurt because you hurt me, and it's the little kid that you hurt. And then I'm like, I'm trying to avenge because clearly nothing else works. And it and what he is asking for in all of this, I didn't hear like he crying for help or anything like that. He ain't asked for money in this in these things or anything like that. He wanted to change behavior. Because listen, talk is cheap, action is not. Right. Yes. And I feel like that a, is a sorry does not mean anything if it does not lead to change. Because listen, talk to your nieces and nephew about this, okay? okay? <laughs> no, but really, it's funny because, um, and I had this conversation recently with Kalima, and my mom was like, when people show you who they are, believe them, right? Because at any point in time, I can say whatever I want to, but as a parent, as a wife, as a friend, et cetera, follow my actions, that they'll tell you how I feel. Right. Mm -hmm. And I say this even with sewing, right? Like, if you notice I don't use a certain pattern group, there's a reason why. If you <laughs> notice I don't use certain fabrics or buy from certain places, 
there's a reason why, right? Follow my actions. They'll, they'll tell you everything that you need to know about me. Um, mm -hmm. But I had the same conversation with Kalima because Kalima came and she was like, mommy, you know, I thought this teacher liked me, but her daughter just told me that she hates me and blah, 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 blah. I said, okay, cool, 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 cool. One, kids are liars. Kids are just, they, that's all they do. They ju are just out here lying and sharing one lie after another just to irritate for the sole purpose of irritation of others, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. So I, what I would like for you to do is think back to how this teacher treated you. Because last I checked, she was buying you Chick-fil-A pretty much every other day, right? Oh, and Chick-fil-A no, is her love language. Chick-fil-A yeah. and Wink are her love language, right? I said, she defended you when things would come up with, and potentially you could get in trouble. You know, I'm like, she, you, she was your safe space for whenever it was that th things were happening in school. So you tell me based upon these things, how do you think that she feels about you? She's like, oh, she likes me. Well, shit, as far as I'm concerned, that's the end all be all, right? What else are we discussing, right? right? Because when people show you who they are, that's what you believe. Like, it's funny because I had to apologize. Like, you know, I have, um, I've got my show starting on the fashion TV network coming up next month. Humble, humble, humble brag. I love it. Come on. Stop it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I had to apologize to um, the the uh, network's owner. And I was just like, hey, I know I've been a little sh shifty because, you know, I've, I had surgery and I had a couple of other things that were happening towards the end of the year. And she was like, no, you're fine. Like anytime that we've asked you to do something like you've done it, you've been responsive. And, and when you have been, when you haven't been responsive, if we've sent you a follow-up, you have been responsive and you've been kind, like you're fine. Um, so I know for me, and in truth, I actually sharing with our listeners, I actually just apologize to Julian because I am just kind of swamped for the month of February. February is just a really busy month for me only because I get very nervous about teaching. I get very nervous about traveling. I have a lot of anxiety around it all. And, um, you know, at So Expo, I pitched nine classes and I didn't expect them all to get chosen. And so the fact that they all got chosen then got sold out. So they added other versions of my class. So now I have 10 classes and I'm just like, it's just a lot to maneuver. It's a lot to navigate. And I start teaching at, you know, Top Stitch Atlanta this weekend. So it's just like, there's so many firsts and so many balls that are kind of in the air just for this month, though. Mm -hmm. That I'm just like, I'm literally like just on like scarcity, bare necessities right yeah. now. But because of that, I feel like I have neglected friendships, not of course just ours, but like my friendships period. And I feel like because of one, how, um, and I'll say this for both of us, but one, how we've both been burned in the past regarding being ghosted and regarding feeling like um, a friendship that we valued was not valued by the other person. I never want to make you feel that way or any of the other people that I feel like are friends to feel that way. You know what I'm saying? And I also feel like there is no harm in correcting behavior. But like you said, if you're correcting behavior, there has to be a change in said behavior. You can't just correct and be like, that's it, right? Because if you were to say to yourself, and your weight loss is prime example, right? If you said to yourself, I need for my labs to look differently. I want my body to look different. So I'm going to change this behavior. And what did you do? You changed the behavior. You didn't just talk this talk, right? It wasn't, I want to change this behavior and then continue to do the same shit that you've been doing. It was, I'm going to change this behavior. And then the behavior thus changed, right? True. Yeah. The same goes for with relationships. The same goes for with anything. Like we can't just, you know, blow smoke up people's asses and be like, oh, well, I didn't I didn't actually think that you were gonna hold me to, to the actual change that I set up is gonna make. And I think first of all, y'all, she apologized. I was like, girl, why you apologize? And I was good. It's was because good. I have a standard for myself. You know what I'm saying? And and she was operating above standards, but you know, I told her, girl, we could, we could. Um, but, and I think, so in, in, in the responses and what he said, and the reason that it, it struck a nerve with her is because he, it was the upholding of standards and it was upholding of a mirror. 
And when that happens, baby, they don't like the mirror. And I think that sometimes we have to uphold the mirror to ourselves, even in our creativity. Yeah. Because we get stuck in the ruts and we say we want to be different. Like that's what Fractals is. It's the chance for us to be different. It, it, it gives a theme for us to operate in to get out of comfort zones. And a lot of the times, especially as uh, Fractal pre-sales for Atlanta Fractal start Friday. Friday. Look, Friday. Look, we we go hit we we gonna roll roll in all the things that are happening. But yeah. um, it really is it's those mirrors. Now sometimes we know how to we know how to con ourselves out of actually changing for ourselves usually. Mm. you know what i'm saying like i the way that i say it like because i can talk i can talk a good game and i yeah. usually and i know enough about psychology to be dangerous and hence yeah. why i can i can verbalize feelings but actually not make change or internalize them and know what's going on like i always feel like i can kind of i can calm a therapist i mean he, he i can't con him but um no i can call my therapist <laughs> like you know, like I can, or I can kind of like I can, I can cheat the system and, and look at least yeah. on the surface, act like I I know what's going on. But like I said, the inner talk is still is still there. So it's, right. it's that change behavior and what we saw, what we are seeing now mm -hmm. after this, my babies, precious babies, and these people wrong men. You got to be right and you got to do this and the third. He said, "Well, since you're talking about it." And you have brought us up and you have said all of these different things. These are the changes that would need to be had. Or you can just be real about it and say that it is what it is and let's be done. Is, yeah. You said that and then you came back and said, well, no, this, that, and the third. And then you had then you allowed, you allowed your husband, daddy, to speak on your son. Mm -mm. The son now, that he does his, not claim. Not dad, right? No. Oh, then, yeah. The son, like they whole family called him daddy except for him he was never allowed to okay he tried to call him pops or something like that not allowed and was basically he has always been uncle sid and basically said well you know he's always been in your he's always been uncle sid so uh, literally still not really uh, allowing for a more closer relationship but you allowed this man to speak on him and bring up his mental health issues which we all got we all got mental we all got health. So we all got them. If you we had a bad day, you probably had a little bit of a mental health issue. Let's let's normalize that and let's not villainize it. Yes. So, but literally, it made you look, it negated everything that you said. All the things that you talked about with D.L. Hughley, it, it negated everything. Yeah. Now, again, you could be both 100% both wrong and right at the same time. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to negate your experiences because of these actions. Yes. But it, it really shined a mirror and the mirror shined, it shined a light into the dark spaces that you was trying to hide. And money can't always do that for you. But the way that you bring up Tyler Perry, the way that you bring up Oprah, the way that you bring up Lee Daniels, the way that you brought up all these people and try to keep on calling them out when you got, when you got called out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing, right? I'm actually, I know that a lot of people are not here for call out culture or call in culture, which is what I feel like is a better name for it, oh, yeah. which is something that you highlighted, of course, because it is in fact that people are calling you in to be better, right? People are calling you in to do something different, right? Right. But hit dogs are going to holler. Absolutely. Right, hit dogs are gonna holler. Um, and I just, it's, you know, it, it's hard for me to process this because as a mom, mm -hmm. like as a mom, I would hate for any of my kids to feel this way, right? Um, mm -hmm. Unless I was done with them too. Let's be real here. Like if I was also finished, mm -hmm. then let's just be done. Let's be done. Let's wipe our hands. It's fine. Let's go. But mm -hmm. let's not, let's not be sitting here wasting each other's time you know, making pretend in to me, but then in front of everybody is something else, you know? Right. And of course, this segment was to kind of replace our, Anna, am I the asshole? So I want to go on record and say, he is not the asshole. I know he wasn't asking, but I'm going to still say it. Yeah, no, no, you are. 
the level of maturity and the level of self advocation that you that you displayed can be studied and should be dissected and fully unpacked. Yeah, because especially with we all got them people, and sometimes it is our parents. Um, and you can long for a relationship knowing that it's not going to come. Correct. Um, and sometimes we, and sometimes you, you have to know that it's not going to come because they don't want to change. And I think as we are talking about calling culture, a lot of times what happens with calling culture is that you're calling people in to be better when they're not at that level yet. So kind of how we talked about the different stages of self-love. Yeah. They're yeah. not at the level to be f- at full, full self love, acceptance, celebration of self. They ain't there yet because they ain't, they ain't, um, they ain't, they ain't did work that you did. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. So I, I guess, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's not, a hmm, it's not okay, but it is a, by by okay, I meant an awareness of this is what it is. Mm. I feel like I feel like far too often we brush piss poor behavior under it's okay, right? This is something that like I and this of course for me is highlighted because I'm consistently talking to my kids about this, right? Because like Kalima, who is my, we'll call her the mean child. She's the mean one. Mm -hmm. will often be mean to her brother and sister. And then when I get on Kalima, they will say to me, mommy, it's okay. And I have to have them pause and say, is it really okay if you were sitting here crying? Is it really okay if you know that this bothers you when she treats you this way? Is it really okay for you to allow this standard of treatment for you? Because if you're saying yes, then I have a little bit more work to do with you because it's never okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I don't want to say that I ride my kids because I don't, but I do believe in them having standards for what they find acceptable in their lives. And the reason why I think it's important now is because then when they grow into adults, they don't have these moments where they're saying it's okay for things that actually are not okay. And we allow piss poor behavior and we don't have the standards for these people. See, and you just gut punched the shit out of me because I just realized that I had nobody to hold up standards for me. Yeah. So literally, it's okay. Usually, is I say it's okay or it is what it is. It's good. We cool. And I move forward because literally, a lot of times, the ones who had the piss poor behavior were the uh-huh. ones who were supposed to teach me how to have standards. Yeah. And here's the thing, right? Like, I think that Moving forward, you should always be ready to move, but you should also be able to move forward with the awareness that that shit was raggedy. It was mm-hmm. unacceptable. I, however, am still going to be moving forward. And I, and just be clear that that behavior will no longer be accepted because it doesn't meet my standard. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. But I think Y'all it's... <laughs> we got deep. I mean, shit. You know, we, listen, somewhere. you know, one thing about us, we gonna we gonna come up on here and be a little, have a little bit more depth than what was intended. Like, yeah, oh, we can't wait here to talk about some Sony shit. <laughs> Psych your mind, make your booty shine. Y'all thought we just gonna <laughs> talk about stitches. <laughs> but you know, I think the mirrors. It's the mirrors that you even let's like how like because again, this plays out in so many different levels in life. How does this play out in your sewing? Like, even I think... Like, I'm like, you want me to show you, to to tell you how it plays out in your sewing? In mine? Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, Jesus. I know. You gonna talk about the comments I get and I let ride. I know. I know. Look at you over here looking at your mirror. I know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh-huh. Ready to be, ready to be a a, a Monique and Daddy. Right. (laughs) I know. I know. I know this. I ain't got an answer for it yet. Let me see. I sent you that. I sent you that story on TikTok. No, not on TikTok, but on Instagram. Let me pull that back up because I feel like that needs to be um, just shared right here because I was like, man, that was really good. Let me send that to Julian because I feel like he need that energy in his life. Um, Let me see. What was it? 
It was the I am not requesting feedback is one of the most powerful sentences for self-care. It really is. And I don't use it. Yes. At all. I need to. Mm-hmm. I need to. I know. Because literally, you always brush it off and say, it's okay. Which is the reason why I go in and say something, because it's not okay. Why is she coming for me? Always. Why is it scum for Julian Day? Shit. Every episode. I can't. Because yeah. you know what it is, and this is, and I feel like this, you know, with my husband, with my kids, but when I love people, right, not only do I just like say that I want the best for them, right? Because we're talking about words meeting actions. I can't allow that to happen in front of my face and not say something. I'm not going to be rude about it, but a, if it, it deserves a correction, then the correction should be made. And one of the things that my husband taught me was to depend on other people's sight until my sight and until I was able to speak up on behalf of myself, right? Because mm -hmm. there was, like, his love has been healing for me, you know? Because before I met him and even after I met him, I didn't think I deserved his kind of love. Like, I was a single mom. I had been divorced. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had a history that I was navigating through, right? And he heard and he accepted all of me because he knows everything there is to know about me. Mm -hmm. And he loved me and his love for me didn't change because of that. And so even though I didn't feel like I deserved it in the moment, I had to depend on his sight because at that moment it was greater than my own. So now I feel like I do that for other people because granted, you might be able to say, hey, I didn't actually really like that, but it's okay. I'm here to say it's not okay, sweetheart. Um, he wasn't he wasn't requesting your feedback. He likes the way that it fits. <laughs> Yes, yes. The ooh, oh, this is about to sound real deep. Y'all, y'all ready to go? I hope y'all got your floaties on. We about to go here for. So I realized about myself, and it's something that um, is taking healing. Um, like even with words of affirmation and people affirming me, um, mm -hmm. it's really uncomfortable. Mm. It's just uncomfortable. I don't know how to fully receive it most days. Um. And how to navigate it not coming with conditions of like, oh, you look really nice, but, or if only. Um, so I'm usually, when that happens, I'm usually real tense. Real tense, because I'm waiting for the other piece that I have to brace for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the backhand the compliment. You were just waiting for the backhand. Uh -huh. uh huh. So even, and the bigger things get, the harder I get scared that I have to brace for the impact. Mm. Mm. So this week I shared um, some some behind the scenes shots of a photo shoot that I took. Um, so fire. And again, like I'm trying to find ways, I'm trying to actively be excited about it and happy about it and not stuck in bracing for mm. the impact. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I and I, cause I know what it feels like to brace to forget about being happy and only bracing for the impact. When yeah. my patterns came out, like my first pattern came out, all I did was brace for the impact, and found myself in my car crying, not happy, but it, uh, like wishing I could be happy, but just waiting for the shoe to fall. I understand that feeling, yeah. So, even just accepting those type of, th it feels like I'm always, you got to brace for it. Yeah. Um, and, and this is in sharing, just sharing stuff and trying stuff. Um, sewing related. It, it literally is. It, yeah, it's scary. It, well, not scary. It's like, it's still, I'm just like, oh God, I'm, I'm waiting for it. Yeah. Like I'm waiting for it. Um, and that's how you, and that's not a life to operate in. It, it, it doesn't feel good. It's tiring as fuck. You know, you're the second person who said that this week to me. Um, Cause you know, in my stories I had shared that we need to learn the difference or the, that not everybody is a friend that we need to learn people who mm -hmm. are associates, coworkers and properly label that in our lives. Mm -hmm. And um, I agree with that. Yes. And I was talking about it with someone in my store, in my DMS and we were talking about it and um, it was actually Tanisha 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, she was like, a lot of times I'm just waiting for the other shoe to just drop. Mm-hmm. And, um, and she's like, I always think that we're friends or I have a friend. And then I'm just waiting for that other shoe to drop. And mm-hmm. I was like, this is a very relatable feeling. And I feel like going into relationships, I'm always ready to be someone else's friend. I typically am, they are not my friend, if that makes sense. Right. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it does because like, I told you like how it is that our friendship differs and how you make me feel safe enough to just show up as I am imperfections, broken, crying, et cetera. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't do that with all of the people who are friends. But one of the things that I also said to her, and I feel like this is really powerful, right? Um, is that you can still be waiting for the other shoe to drop, but it shouldn't impact or affect how it is that you still navigate the world, right? Whether mm-hmm. the other shoe drops or not, cool, great, wonderful. I may or may not love that for us, but whatever. The shoe will drop or it will not. At the end of the day, I still have to function in this world. So do I allow that to control me or do I control me? Do I continue to move forward? You know what I'm saying? And it's funny because people look at me and they're like, you don't suffer from imposter syndrome. Look at everything that you're doing. And I'm like, no, no, no. (laughs) Let me be clear here. (laughs) Your girl just be having therapy sessions with herself. Like I sit and talk to myself and be like, "Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, that's not what we're doing today. Like you got to suck that shit up. This isn't the energy that's going to get us where we want to be in life. Like you got to move forward, right? Because it's not that I don't, I don't battle with imposter syndrome. Um, In fact, actually one of my old clients was like, your imposter syndrome is actually your secret sauce. Because at the end of the day, I'm like, I got three mouths to feed, right? I have a husband. Like there are a lot of days that I don't want to market myself. There's a lot of days where I just am just like, why can't clients just come? Or why can't the money just be finding me, right? Right. Love. And okay, Love. why can't I just create the content and it go viral? Why can't I just, you know what I'm saying? Why do I have to I be have out to sell here? Sell pictures on a sewing machine pedal. Okay. I'll play with it. Right. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I have choices to make, or rather at the beginning of the day, I have choices to make. I can mm-hmm. either choose to believe that I have the power to change my day, to change my out course, et cetera, et cetera. Or I can choose to allow external factors determine whether or not that actually makes me worth something great, you know? Um, and of course, for those who study psychology, it's internal versus external locus of control. I'm a firm believer in internal locus of control, right? Like I'm a firm believer that I ultimately control the things. And she talked about my big words. Listen, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. I just want y'all to, I just want to highlight, I just want to put, <laughs> put a little pin in it. So y'all remember. Mm-hmm. Y'all got some cerebral. Cerebral podcast host here. <laughs> um, again, and I, th- I think one thing that I think like knowing how to operate, even like you still got to keep moving, mm-hmm. uh, can be sometimes taken as that that toxic positivity because mm-hmm. you, you just forget about doing all that. You just like, oh, it's going to be great and all that other stuff. And I think sometimes, especially for me, what I get stuck in is that I have, I've, I'm waiting for so many shoes to drop. Mm. No more room for me to move. Mm. So now it's basically having to unpack yeah. the stuff that has been buried and compartmentalized and stuff like that. Because I remember, like, I'm I'm one of the people due to, like, when, when crazy stuff happens or death or something like that happens, I don't cry. My mm. eye will start to twitch. I will start, I will literally start having twitches and tremors. Right, because you internalize. Mm-hmm. And 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 it had and it has no place to go. Right. The energy literally has no place to go. Right. Um so and the same thing, like like these things, it just it starts to it starts to reverberate and it starts to bounce off of things and it starts to crash on things and it starts to knock things down in your body. Mm-hmm. And having to now deal with that. Um yeah. and I think even we see it in 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 our creativity and our sewing, like that's when you start making the stupid mistakes and the things that should be easy for you. Not you over here coming from my edges because, oh, if that is not what happens. <laughs> like, and you know, you up here surging and you done surged a hole in the something. You don't put, you don't put a sleeve on a neckline. Uh, all that because literally you are no longer connected. You're no longer connected. And the reality is gone. Yeah. You just lost it. Yeah. 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 Um, 
Now me over here trying to recover from my flashback of like a recent mistake. The, and it's so hard to hit those mistakes because then I'm like looking at myself crazy because I'm like, you knew better. Like, do you even so? Do you even so? You know but, what I'm saying? You, but you're allowed that because you do so. Let's be real. Right. Because we all, we all do it. Yeah. We all, we all make them. We all do it. But it's usually, like, like, I don't think that people alone. notice that I'm actually coaching myself in the moment when I'm like, you know what? It's important that we show our mistakes. Like, I don't want y'all to be out here thinking that people don't make mistakes. It's really just me being like, it's okay if you made a mistake. People will still see you as a professional. You're okay. It's fine. <laughs> people Look, make mistakes. You don't have to beat yourself up. You don't have to cancel the whole garment. It's okay. <laughs> really okay. And and the funny thing is, is that there's so many people who don't believe that. And I think, right. and again, I think we need to make more mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. We just need to make more. We need to like, and I think in this, and like, even in the whole, um, the whole, that man, that boy's name is literally, it's on the tip of my tongue and I can't, I can't think of it. And I was, I was just looking at it on Facebook too. Let me see if I could find it. Um, um I shared about it. But, um, it literally is a, like, if you say like, you know what, my bad, I did this wrong. But like, like with a garment or something like that, you can seem rip to redo. But you got, but you got to do, you got to do the work to let, to, yeah. to, to read the stitches. Yes. And it's like even emotional work. You got to show amends. I ain't, I ain't say you got to show groveling. You ain't got to kiss the ring or something. But you have to show, you have to show change behavior and amends to, to then lead to, to lead to change. And the person who you wronged may not, like with any fabric, you could try, you could, your mistakes could be a chiffon. Mm -hmm. And you could be trying to sing rip and rip the hole. That's, that happens. Yeah. Or could say it's okay because that's, that's what I was about to use. That happens. It does happen. But the opportunity there is if, if it is to continue forward. That's what a little bit of you can do some mending, some visual mending. You can cheat the seam a little bit, go on the inside to find stable fabric to do something with. Um, or the pro the project could no longer be what you originally intended, and you can find new use, a new relationship, a new. You can at least take what you learned from how this messed up in your next one. Is it Shalon or Shalon? Yeah. Shalon. Shalon. That's what it is. Because I was like, it's sure, sure, sure something. <laughs> and I was like, what, um, this makes me think that self love is the biggest and most audacious plot twist in the world. Oh, yeah. Because to be able to love yourself as you navigate the mistakes, to be able mm -hmm. to love yourself enough to show up day after day after you have. Fucked up that chiffon after you have, um, you know, maybe said something that was misconstrued and now like someone's mad at you or maybe because I had to discipline my kids and now they're angry with me. Right. Mm -hmm. To still show up and to still love yourself when you feel like people hate you or when you want to hate yourself is really like it's like I got the audacity to love myself through all of this. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Absolutely. And it's like big plot twists, right? We call it in, in the sewing world, we call it like a different design choice, right? Because, mm -hmm. right, we saw Mimi do it with the hole that she had accidentally cut in the sweatshirt and then she covered it up with the triangle. And now you have a new design. It's fine. It's literally fine. You know what I mean? Right. It's fine for us to not follow the directions. It's not fine for us to not follow the patterns, whether that's in life or whether that's in something. It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's it's interesting as you bring that up, kind of like the self love is the it's the most audacious and the the biggest plot twist of things. Uh, one of my friends, love them dearly, I swear I do, um, sent me a video and it was a churchy video, and you know I grew up churchy, talking about um, the opposite of live. Like, if you spell live backwards, it's evil. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, and how you should not go about trying to live your life. You need to give it to God. But I'm like, 
you do they basically say you need to die but i thought that jesus gave his life so that we could live I'm, i come that you more ha might have life and have more abundantly i swear that's what it says i swear that's what a book a book a book i can't quote no i can't quote but I you know i, I can life. give a gist i come that you might have life and have it more abundantly i swear sometimes Where? people just be reaching and putting god and shit the, god is like this act I, that's not I say I, none of this. This isn't what I said. I didn't say put, this. God said, thou shalt not put my name in it. Because my name is Bennett and I ain't in it. In it. Mm -mm. People really be putting God in too many things that he was like, he probably be up there side eye and it's like, for real? Mm -hmm. Word? This what we doing now? Mm -hmm. This is what I gave my only son for? Look, but 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 again, I think it's it's about the control of life, and people don't and to when you reclaim the self love mm -hmm, and and, mm -hmm. and the internal knowing of who you are, mm -hmm. which is really knowing God, because you know if you're connected, you're connected, right? So to know yourself is to know God. But right. anywho, that's that's that ain't this conversation. Um, it to to do that, people don't have the same control over you. Yeah. And people yeah. operate in finalities of things. Like we only have a certain amount of power in this world. Right. So I have to even steal your own power. Mr. C, your girl. To make sure I have enough. Oh, that is so good. Because, wow. Like, I feel like right now I'm having to, and I feel like I've shared this sporadically, but like, I feel like, you know, right now my, my own self-love is coming under fire, Right. Mm -hmm. Um, like I'm feeling, I'm feeling angsty, right? Because mm -hmm. I do want to lose weight, not just because I want to, but because I need to, right? Because if I'm going to be going into menopause early, you know, which will probably be next year, because I said this year, we've taken a year off from surgery. Okay. We're just not doing it anymore. We need a breaky break. Right. And that comes with weight gain and with, with some additional health possible concerns, right? Like my bones being more brittle, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm just like, I can't, I don't feel comfortable in this body anymore, but it's hard for me to say, I want to change and I love myself, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's hard for me to acknowledge that both of those things can and should exist at the same time, you know, mm -hmm. almost like a... I love myself and because I love myself, I want to make this change that I know is going to be for the better. Right. But what I'm struggling with is because what I feel like is my body hates me and because my body hates me, then I should also hate me. Right. And it's like, I walk, I work out, you know, I am mindful about my eating, you know, trying to fuel my body, you know, 80, 20 rule with, you know, 20% of being fun and letting myself live a little with a little cookie every now and again and you know eating the things that I also really enjoy because like the other morning when I was on TikTok live I was definitely just popping raw you know raw lettuce into my mouth because I was like oh my god this is so good this is like my favorite thing in the world you know but I feel like you know even finding out that I'm BRCA positive you know I'm just like my body hates me so why should I love me and it's hard to separate that as I'm navigating, but I feel like even this conversation has been healing for me because really unpacking and really remembering that loving myself as I better myself, as I work on myself, as I become the best version of myself is all part of the process, right? Like, like you said, there is no end goal. Like, it's not like at, once I hit this level, it's end. Like the only end game is death for me, right? That's the only right. time that I'm done you know, working on and chasing the self-love, you know? Um, and it's it just reminds me that uh, something that my husband said to me because I'm like, and I feel like we might've talked about this. Maybe we didn't, but like, you know, every other month I ask him how I could be a better wife, right? Because um, during our premarital counseling, actually his dad did our premarital counseling, which I thought was going to be so awkward, right? Because I was definitely pregnant and obviously we'd had sex before marriage. So- <laughs> Very, very, awkward. you know, very, very awkward for me. Right. Um, but one of the things that he said was he was like, you need to open up the conversation, you know, monthly 
and talk about ways you can be better. So that way you're always cutting edge, right? You're always, mm -hmm. you know, um, you always have that time to have that conversation with each other, right? I also feel like you should do it with friendships as well or any relationships. I do it with my kids as well. And I ask them, how can I be a better mom? Is there anything else that you need from me? Like, how can I show up for you better, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I remember asking him, like, I think I was asking about lingerie. I love lingerie. I'm that person. I buy it for myself. He just so happens to get the treat, right? Look, look, you better, you better look good for yourself. Okay. Look back at it, as they say. Hey, but I asked him, I was like, well, what's your favorite thing that I wear? And he was like, "Your my answer is probably not going to be what you thought. And I was like, well, what is it? He was like, your self-confidence. He's like, when you feel really good about yourself, that is literally the time that I find you the most sexy. And it's funny that he said that because it's like that, that thing of like, no, you really like, yes, I think you're beautiful, but I find your beauty at its most, or I find you most appealing when you find you most appealing. I just be over here piggybacking off of you. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I think and that's really control. impactful. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting as, as we're talking about it, like kind of both being right at the same time around how you feel about your body. I'm having to go back and now do that because mm -hmm. I started to make change and, right. and, and did not catch up. So as pictures and stuff are about to come out of me. Um, Looking like a zaddy. <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> Having to get used to what that who I look like now, mm -hmm. and being like, you did something good here. Yeah, you can celebrate that. Right, is is something I'm now having to do. It's interesting as I, you know, I posted a little, you posted a little behind the scenes and everything like that, and people saying like, I didn't realize it was you. Like shit, did I look that much different? I mean. I, I I looked different, but it's not, not even about the look. But you carry yourself now differently. Really? Yes. So it's not so much that you look different, but, but I mean you do look very different, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, but it's also in the fullness of your smile. It's also in how you walk. It's also in how you talk, right? So it's not just about the look only it's also like i was looking back you had put like a side-by-side -side picture of your face up mm -hmm. on facebook and the smiles is what stood out to me most right mm -hmm. like that's what changed to me the most right like it's almost like before you didn't like you could tell that you were not fully happy like you could see it like there was a sadness in your smile there was a forcedness in your smile. Whereas now I feel like your smile is more free. I feel like your body movement is more free. I feel like there's a level of comfort that is representative in, in your whole movement that you didn't have before. Well, it's in, you are not the first person to say that this week. One of my, one of my coworkers said, like, you move with such a lightness now. As we were just in conversation, um, I was like, shit. It's interesting. It's interesting. We still unpacking it, y'all. So, and I ain't got no language for it yet. But it's interesting. <laughs> so we, we're leaving it at it's interesting, but we're not going to. It's okay. It's fine. See, I find a new. We we pulled out the thesaurus again. Come on, thesaurus. We different words. We we choose a differentness. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. It's again. It's interesting, and it's almost like um the way I saw saw it. It was a reintroduction of self. Yeah. Um. Like a rebirth almost. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, understand that I'm literally basically the same size that I went to college in mm -hmm. or close to it. Um, like especially clothing size. I'm we about the same size I was then. Yeah. I got smaller in college because I stopped eating. We ain't gonna talk about that. Um, but I, I didn't have freshman fifteen. When I tell you I lost a freshman twenty, because I okay. literally I was the girl was fine, fine. I know I look crackhead skinny. Okay, well, no, I didn't. I, I, I was dumb. My head is already big. It just got biggle. Oh my God, Julian. Just biggle. Julian. Just, I was just neck and shoulders and just bobbling. <laughs> just bobbling. Um, but yeah, so. <laughs> look, so 
yeah, I have not, I like, I'm trying to understand what my adult life looks like now in many yeah. aspects, but especially like physically in my body, who am I now? Yeah. And, and how to see myself positively because I can still see, I still look for the critique and the things I need to change. I'm like, well, but you did, you, you've done a work here. A yeah. work has occurred. Yeah. You can rest in that for a second. And I don't know how to do that. It's funny, as you were talking about, like, people saying, like, how your accolades and stuff like that, do y'all realize? People would talk about, like, you do so many things. I'm like, no, I, I feel I feel like the laziest person ever most days. Thanks. Like, I don't I feel do like shit. laziest person, and I literally don't have time for shit. <laughs> no. And I'm like, but, and still feel lazy. Like, I ain't doing nothing. I'd be on, I wrote, scrolling on TikTok for five minutes, I'd be like, I don't even have time for this. <laughs> Look! Uh, you know, I'll be scrolling longer, but you know, but then still like, oh yeah, I don't know if I can do it. I got, we got recording the podcast. I got this group. I'm on this board. Yeah. I got him and feel lazy and feel lazy and don't know how to, and, but yeah. also don't know what success or looks like. Yeah. Feel like. Yeah. But you know what? That's, that's the curse of, from our parents, right? Because even growing up, and I know like my mom kept us busy because she wanted us to stay out of trouble. Right. Mm -hmm. And I love that. But also I don't feel like I'm successful unless my, my plate is overflowing and I have, and I have successfully done and accomplished and put them into the categories, box them up and put them away. Well, it's because we literally were trained in being right. Being double the best. Like we, you have yeah. to be better. Or more to get half as much, because the the saying the the exact saying is escaping me at the moment. But literally, I need y'all to understand this, okay? And I and this is this is how serious it is for certain for some people. I went to elite schools. Um, I went to very like at the time this was in the early two thousands or something like that. Like my middle school was like ten thousand dollars a year. Wowzers, yeah. Like it's now like twenty two thousand or more. Um, like that's college tuition money yeah. for a school. Um, but literally for black students, they had trainings with other, like talking about how you had to do so much more to, to be seen as half as much. Like you, you were mine, not allowed to rest on your laurels. No, mine came from my parents and my family. Um, oh, I got it there too. But also from like, it, I got it from so many different directions. Understand that my mother was, she she came in under affirmative action at Procter and Gamble in the seventies. Ah, uh, wow! Okay? So she worked corporate early on and having yeah. to learn that in many different aspects. Um, so you you're hearing that at the family levels. Then she went back to school and got her degree, getting that from that level. But then I went to these type of schools where I'm hearing it from the men, the teachers, and everything like that. But then also seeing it in action when I got into school and teachers telling telling me that you only got in because you're black. Yeah. So stuff like like you you saw it, but then you actually saw it, um, and the unlearning of those things. The same way that you have to unlearn that it's okay to make a mistake. It's un it's okay to to enjoy the ride. It's a it's yeah. okay um, to to find to find success in the process and in the learning. Yeah, um, those are all things that we have to that are not in our DNA and are not innate to us because just for survival, perfection was required. Right. Just for survival, perfection was required. That is so, ugh. and of course for me, it was a little different because I, I come from a family that while we aren't famous, we're like famous adjacent, you know, like with my dad, with my grandfather being Duke Ellington's basis, like people knew our family, especially in New York. And then my uncle was the last living Pip from Gladys Knight and the Pips, you know? Um, so it was like a thing of like, I felt like I always had to be best. Like mm -hmm. I have to be better than best. And I remember my grandfather used to tell me, you only have one opportunity to make a first impression and you better go in and wow them. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and of course that was what I, you know, I was trained to do. Like, that's what I did, which is why even now as a recovering people pleaser, I'm just like, wow. Like, this person doesn't like me. I didn't wow them. It's my fault. You know, it's me. It's me. It's me. Like, last year, towards the end of the year, you know, as I'm, like, marking off people whose phone numbers I no longer need because we no longer have relationships, I'm like, Denver, is it my fault? Like, is it is it me? And he's like, no, it's not you. Like, 
Because of course, our first thing to go to is it's my fault. You know, I was the one who was the mess up. It was me. I didn't wow them. You know, I didn't shuck and jive enough for them. Um, or they no longer felt like I was worthy, you know, and um, in those moments, it's hard to remember that I'm worth love. Um, even if it's from no one else besides myself, I'm worth the love, you know. Um, I think that's what I'm working on right now. Yeah. If, even if it's nobody else but myself. Because usually I don't give myself the love first. Mm. So I can't, how can I expect others to show me love if I can't, if I don't even know how to experience it from myself? Yeah. That's, so that's where I am. Because even as you're talking about other things, like even like, understand that I live by the saying, if you're on time, you're late. To be early is to be on time. Right. To be on time is to be late. And to be late is unacceptable. Your girl and always functioning late. unacceptable. And don't show up. <laughs> And don't show up. Like, literally, understand that my day is off. Like, the only place I don't show up to on time now is, is work. Which is, well. that's, a, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, meetings and stuff like that, I'm always, I can't, mm -hmm. do not, I don't. That, I can't, I can't function if I'm late. Yeah. I can't function if I'm late. Um yeah so so to as 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 y'all this is we didn't put mirrors on ourselves in this whole self-love month this is supposed to be about someone damn it speaking of so what are you working on well um it's valentine's day valentine's day i got a new machine mm. i got a little valentine's day present from burnett so I have um, literally today it was delivered and I did a live. So it's in, on my Instagram of a um, B68 airlock. So I'm going to play with this new machine. I literally just took it out the box. Um, this on this coming Sunday with Black Soy Network, we're still doing um, Black Pattern Designer. So we're doing um, Happily Dressed um, Brandon's. Um, oh, Ranger Jeans. Yeah, we're doing the Ranger Jeans. Um, so that's coming up. I am still, I have one more piece of my pattern test for, uh, Friday patterns. So I'm going to start working on that. Today. Nice. Um, got everything else done. Um, super excited about my look jacket. I got to send you pictures. It's cute. It's cute. Oh, I can't wait to see. It's cute. I, I literally married this jacket for lapel pins. Oh, oh, that's right. You were telling me about this one. So I put them on, literally, that was my project in church. So I put lapel pins on the jacket. Um, so I'll send it to you so you can see it. Um, and y'all see it when y'all see it, because I'll post it. But y'all see it when y'all see it. Y'all better, and y'all better like it. I know. Go and like these posts. Make sure you go and like that live, too. Yes. Also, if you don't follow me on Instagram, can you follow me? Absolutely. Yes. And we will drop that link in the description so that all the people can know where to follow you. Yes, because I'm literally 100 away from 10,000. We about to get it up. It's We're going trying up. to get it. We're trying to get I'm it. Like, let me make understand. sure I, I share a little something, something. So and so the reason that we say this is that there there are new opportunities that open up at certain milestones. Ten thousand for Instagram has been one of those. Um. So and I've been lingering there for a long time. So it's interesting to see some stuff. But you know, I've been posting some things and some new things are coming. Um. People think I'm really launching something. I'm I'm just sharing something that has happened that is kind of a it's a big thing here, it's a regional thing, but it's still pretty cool. Um, so that is kind of where pictures and stuff are coming from right now. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm working on. What you working on? What you got going on? What do I have going on? Okay, so I'm like, ooh, 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 let's get it together. Um, I've got my very first like local class coming up this weekend at Top Stitch ATL where I will be actually sewing a um a clutch. It's super cute. And I actually sewed it on did a tutorial for it on my YouTube channel and I turned it into a purse, like a crossbody bag. I am currently also making sure that I have my um I've got to be building out these kits for next week um for all of these um you know, for my classes in, in Puyallup, Washington. Yeah. And shout out to me for getting that pronunciation right. Thank you, but I also, know. shout out because we are super excited and super proud of you. That Thanks. you are doing the job, that you are doing the work, that you're going to do amazing. Hence why, hence why your class is sold out because you did amazing the last time. I'm so excited. So excited. Um, so I've got that. 
I'm, I also have a couple of like, I'm going live to do a simple like boxy woven shirt because I feel like a lot more people feel more comfortable working with woven fabrics, but it's like, well, what can I make? So we're going to do the Cielo top from Closet Core. So okay. that will be up on my YouTube channel as well. Um, and I've been reading. I started a book talk, y'all. I started a book talk. Mm -hmm. And then after I started it, I was like, I looked at my daughter and I was like, do you want to like make it like a joint TikTok? Like we can, it can be like a mom and daughter like book talk situation where, you know, if we read separate books, cool, you can do your own thing. But if we read the same book, like we've read a couple of the same books together this year, then we can, you know, share our, our input. And I think mm -hmm. it's cool because like I'm a, an elder millennial and she's whatever generation she is, you know, at 14. Y'all, I have been parenting for 14 years and that shit is bananas to me because every day I look around like, where is the baby parent? alive for 14? Look at this. Look at God. That's a blessing. It is. And it is. And it is. Um, so yeah, I've just got those things going on. I'm still working on one of these like secret projects that I'm super excited about, but I'm also wrapping up my pattern test for my next pattern. It's called the Presley pleated skirt. And I think that it's going to drop next week. I'm super excited about it. The tester photos that are coming in are looking amazing. Um, I feel like I'm getting into the groove of the tests, um, somewhat. But, you know, day it's a day. process. And day. of course, like working on Nomi stuff, you know, um, I just submitted my designs for um, fall. Mm -hmm. And I'm very geeked about what is coming for fall of 2024. Exciting. Exciting. Super exciting. I'm still doing my, also doing my class. I done, we, we, we fell off for a little bit, but I'm still doing it because I don't mm -hmm. So we are still working through that. Um, still, so expect things to come from that. I will say that. Things awesome. Will, things will come this year. Um, but then also we just we just having fun. I know bought some new vintage patterns. Uh, because my sizing has changed so much. I got to. But then of course Beyonce. Beyonce drops. You know Texas Hold'em and sixteen carriages. I know. So I'm She's feeling. Good and well. Our marketing is fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, so, also, Atlanta Fractals early bird tickets are for sale now. So, oh, yes. Because, yeah, they drop Friday. Yep. So, so now, yes, y'all go, y'all get your tickets. They'll be in the, the link will be in the bio. Y'all get it. Y'all know where to get it. Mm -hmm. the link below. Um, but expect next month in, in preparations for Act Two, y'all gonna get some Western wear from me. I'm on Western wear. I don't, I, I'm waiting for the pattern to be delivered now. We are going with uh, folk wear attire. I think it's folk wear attire. Is it folk wear patterns? Mm -hmm. One of them, they have a Western pattern with applique and beautiful cutouts and the smiley pockets, everything like that. In okay. Ankara. In Ankara. In Ankara. So the, the fabric is also coming. Not so that we need fabric, but you know, I love this for us. Y'all, y'all was in y'all fabric fast. That was cute, but I, I never, I never claimed to it because the, the Lord knew, the Lord you knew. Know, I wasn't really on a fabric fast, but I just wasn't feeling inspired to go and shop. But then I went to Hobby Lobby today, and that shit was forty percent off, and I all of a sudden found inspiration. So, I mean, it happens, and that's okay. Yeah. Even though I call them craft for you because y'all don't like using their name, but you know, facts. What do we call them? Craft for you. Craft for you. Mm -hmm. They're craft for you. The only people I, I use, I will use Joanne's name because I like my Joanne people. They nice. Oh. So y'all better, if y'all going to Joanne's on a pattern sale day, y'all better treat them right. If it could back to me that y'all ain't, I'm going to come for you. I'm letting you know, I'm going to be like your black mama. Said if if one of the neighbors tell me you ain't acting right, I got eyes. Uh -uh. Just know. Just know. Y'all bet, bet not, y'all bet not be messing with my good, my good Joanne Fabrics people. I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, so I yeah, I there were some fabrics that I have been eyeing and thinking about, and this project just really gave me the impetus to so let's have some fun. So I'm really yes. excited. Um let and of course, have fun. um that will also come with machines because you know I don't I had some machines to live with beyond beyond the brunette. So, you know, we'll practice. 
with mm-hmm. with the machine at school. Mm-hmm. I love this for us. I love yeah. this for us. A machine a day will keep me out of jail. <laughs> 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 I'm done well, with because it. I mean I I felt judgment and I don't even care from in my in my um in my stories because literally I was bored in a meeting and I counted up my machines. I saw that. Mm-hmm. I felt judgment for so many people. I don't care. That and, dude was like, let me just list them out. And I did, and I did, and and I think I still forgot some, but it's okay. Um, and then on top of this, Burnett that was delivered today. I had a Bernina delivered today. Um, and then I realized that I done, I think I got three or four other bids out currently. Wow. Wow. So I might have to drive five hours. If I get one, the one I'm excited about, I might have to drive five hours to get it. Driving but five it, hours is bananas. But it's a treadle. I don't have any treadle machines. It'll be my first treadle. It's unhinged. I'm not here to judge. I'm just, I'm just sharing. Is all, and I'm proud of my crazy. Mm-hmm. Aren't and we I'm, all? But so yeah, this is if I get this machine, I will, and I'll give an update if I if what happens. It's a Wheeler Wilson, um, and it's a Model Three, and it's from probably the 1860s, 1870s. Oh my god! Okay, that's a little exciting. <laughs> So like I don't I don't like this is different. It will be different. So it's not like I'm just going for a singer. No, this is different. Then why you have to play singer like that though? <laughs> Cause I did. You know. I mean, if you if you love your singer, but this is different. Different. He said it's giving a, a whole different energy. It, it's different. it's giving it's giving secret garden energy. It really is. I mean, it's giving perfect for making insertion lace and lingerie dresses and stuff like that. Ooh. It, saying, Ooh, and are you hoping you're trying to make me some things? Oh. I'm trying to give you inspiration for you to make yourself some things. But I don't have the machine. <laughs> you don't need the machine. Technically, let me tell you something. So, because if you did not know, and I talk about this in when I do my teaching classes, that um, surgeries were invented, like the the way that we know overlock machines, they were invented for like in 1889. Some of the first places that you saw them used was in clothing creation or in insertion lace dresses that were worn in the Edwardian period around the 1900s. So those lingerie dresses with all that stuff, you look on the inside, you can see surgery on the inside. Meaning that you can actually use your surgeon in creating your historical garments and it still actually be historically accurate. Oh, I that's love nice. that. I love that for these people mm-hmm. who do stuff like this. Cause you know, that's not my, that's not my calling. But I'm just, I'm just saying if for people who are thinking of Atlanta frock tales in a yeah. secret garden. Yes. Like garden party. Think of Edwardian. Think of summer lingerie dresses. Think of insertion lace. Think of pigeon bus. Think of S curve. Think of Gibson girl. I need to see you in something like this. So imagine I'm not going to do that fully. I'm going to do probably under high waisted pants and then also a lace shirt. Okay. I mean, yes, I have a video. I just sent out an email that includes, um, you know, to our Atlanta Fractals mailing list that includes our Pinterest board that is filled with inspiration. Well. For okay. all. Okay. Okay. So, so you mean, so you're telling me that I now have to updo, like, like, see the Pinterest board and then up, upstage it. That's what you're telling me. That's what you're telling me. All I'm saying is that it's going to be on a Pinterest board. Okay. So I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying. So if you guys have not signed up for the Pinterest, I mean, signed up for the Atlanta Fractals mailing list, I highly suggest that you do it anyway, even if you plan or don't plan on coming. It is a lot of fun happening up on that board. A lot of just inspiration, period. Um, And we're not talking about just your basic suits. Um, We're like thinking outside of the box, okay? So go for it. But also, you can go, I mean, just look. I just need need to show you. Just need to show you. Mm -hmm. Just, Just launch, just release. So, I mean, you can even go to Beyonce's Valentine's Day post, and she's giving... What needs to be given, Wait. just change the color. Just change the color. 
God knew not to give me, um, just give me that body. I told I, God. I would be out here just like her. I've been telling God that God, God, baby Jesus, give me the heart of Christ, but the body of a slut. I'm done with you, sir. <laughs> done with on that close us out, Julian. I don't want to be a hoe most days. Just some. Just a little friendly. Just have friendly body parts. Just I can't. I just I, I mean my friend my, my body parts want to make friends with things. We're not having group on team. Okay. I it won't be group on. Sir. It'd be more event bright. <laughs> <laughs> You got to register for it at least. He said, I, I at least need a copy of your ID. Yes. I at least need to know who you is. Right. Oh, my goodness. There are so many fantastic designs out here. Mm -hmm. All right, babe. Close us on out. We could be up on here forever talking. Really so, y'all, we want to say thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for allowing us to process life. Um, this is sometimes probably every so often we just need these process moments. This is almost one of them cutting table episodes that we ain't did in a little bit, but a little bit deeper. Uh -huh. But this week, what do you need to shine your own mirror on? And what do you tell yourself that gets you out of actually holding yourself accountable? That's good, Julian. That's good. Let's go deep and let's find out what's going on. Until next time, y'all. Make sure y'all are able to stay creative and stay audacious. Bye. Bye.